this even straight? I have no idea. I've completely forgotten how to do this. Hello, beautiful friends. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to the Continuing Chronicles. It has been a minute, y'all. It has been about a year and a half since I filmed anything for this channel and I've missed y'all tremendously. I've thought about coming back so many times over the past year and a half, but I just never felt like I had the bandwidth to do so. I'm sure that y'all know that creating content for YouTube isn't just the sitting down and filming part, which takes time, but it's also the planning and preparing for the content that you're about to film, and then also the editing and uploading and all of that stuff. It can be a very time consuming process, especially if you are long winded and rambly like me and have to cut like an hour's worth of raw footage into a manageable 20 minutes or so. And so anytime I thought about coming back, I just stopped and, and asked, when on earth would you do this? <laughs> so that just kept me away because I just felt really overwhelmed as much as I missed being a part of the online bookish community and talking books with y'all. I just didn't know if I had the bandwidth to do it. And I don't really plan on taking a lot of time here to discuss what I've been doing for the past year and a half or anything like that. I promise y'all it wasn't anything super interesting or dramatic or anything like that. It just really was busy life stuff. And I'm happy to make a video kind of discussing more in detail about that. If you have any interest, if you do have any interest, please go ahead and feel free to leave a comment down below and I'd be happy to do like a chatty catch up video with you if you're interested. But other than that, I just kind of want to jump into the content and I wanted to do something fun for my very first video. I noticed that I just missed Becca's Bookopolathon. If you're not familiar, Becca from Becca and the Books created a TBR game based on Monopoly. She calls it Bookopoly and she does this now I think every once every two months. She used to do it monthly but now she does it bi-monthly. And once a year she does a month where everyone can participate with her. She creates a board for it and everything. I will link her announcement video for this year's Bookopolathon down below so you can go and you can see all of the rules and all of that stuff because it's very interesting. It's very well put together and I wanted to go ahead and join in even though I'm late. So it actually was through the month of September but I I want to go ahead and use it for the month of October. So I'm actually going to go ahead and pick my October TBR using Becca's Bookopolathon. I will possibly try to be bringing back my own TBR game, the My Bad TBR game. Um, I'll try to link some of those videos down below for you as well. But my board is kind of trashed at this point and I don't like some of the prompts so I need to redo it. And to be honest, I am awful at creating boards. Like straight lines and me do not get along. For some reason I cannot operate a ruler. I, I don't know what that is but it's very difficult. So I will try to create a new board and if it comes out semi-decent maybe I'll get back into that. I, I only did a handful of rounds before I stopped filming altogether but if I do want to start making TBRs again um, I probably will do it that way. But anyway without further rambling let's go ahead and get into the roles for my October Bookopolathon. All right, everyone, so here's my setup. I hope that you are able to see it pretty well. I tried to get it as close and straight as humanly possible. I am gonna go ahead and start with just six rolls. I would say that I tend to read about 10 books a month recently, and I'm gonna allow myself a little bit of flexibility just in case I do roll a double and have to add to my TBR. But also, I am a member of a couple of book clubs, and if I want to read those picks, I want to allow myself room to do so. And I also am part of a monthly gifting group on Facebook where I send a book to somebody and then I receive a book in return from somebody else. It's really fun, but I won't know what that book is until October. And I try to read them when they come in. So I need the ability to read that book as well, but I won't know until after the month starts. So I do want to allow myself a little bit of freedom in that. So we'll go ahead and start with six and see how it goes, see how friendly the board is to me. I will say now I do apologize that if you hear really loud meowing or banging in the background, that would be Archibald. He is my 10 month old orange tabby. You guys have not met him since the last time I filmed. We did adopt him in December of last year and he is definitely a mama's boy. If I am in the house, he wants to be with me at all times and he is not very happy that I have locked him out of this room. So I apologize if he gets a bit loud. We'll try to make this as quick and painless as possible. Also, you can see here that I do have the chance cards and the community chests. So for these, Becca allowed us to basically create our own. These were just names of books that we want to read and we can put whatever books that we want on there. And these are just prompts. And we could create our own prompts for these as well. So let's go ahead and start with roll number one. That would be nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that is buildings. And that basically just means to read a book with buildings on the cover. 
My very first role was to read a book with buildings on the cover and so for this I think I want to go ahead and read Only Good People Here by Ashley Flowers. If you're not familiar with who Ashley Flowers is, she is actually the host of a very popular true crime podcast called True Crime Junkies and this is her debut novel. And it sounds interesting, it sounds like it might be something right up my alley and I want to go ahead and give it a shot even though I'm a little bit skeptical because I don't know anything about her writing talents or abilities. But my understanding about this is this, this follows a character named Margot Davies and when she was just six years old her next door neighbor January was abducted and killed and it kind of haunted the town where she came from. And when Margot has to return to that town to care for her sick uncle another similar crime happens. And this kind of brings everything back to Margot who is determined to find the missing little girl before the same thing happens to her that happened to her friend January so long ago. I really love that it's got the return to hometown trope. I really love mystery thrillers that contain that trope. And I'm interested to see what Ashley Flowers does with this thriller and to see what she's capable of as an author. She's obviously very immersed in the true crime space and I'm sure that she has a lot of ideas about where to take the story. So I'm hoping that at the very least it's engaging and that it keeps me interested throughout even if it's not necessarily shocking. I don't really believe anymore that thrillers have to be shocking in order for them to be good because after so long once you've been reading for thrillers as long as I have very very little shocks you but what it does have to do and it has to be engaging and it has to be a journey. It has to be something that keeps me entertained throughout the whole thing so I'm really interested to see what that one does. Okay book number two. Oh, and of course we get a double. See, that's why I was cautious. So now I have to roll a total of seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, summer. Okay, so that is basically a book that gives you summer vibes. All right, my next role landed on summer. So that is to read a book with summer vibes. So I thought what better book to read for that than Beach Read by Emily Henry. I have been very, very interested in reading another Emily Henry since I read The People We Meet on Vacation, which was probably the best friends to lovers book I have ever read. It was so well done. I enjoyed that immensely. And I've actually had this on my shelves longer than that. So I definitely want to get to this one. And I believe this features a maybe not necessarily a hate to love, but something similar. From what I understand, this follows two writers. The male protagonist is an acclaimed writer of literary fiction. And then our female protagonist, January, is a writer of like rom-com. So they really don't have anything in common. In fact, I think the male protagonist, what's his name? I'm just calling him male protagonist, Augustus. I think Augustus might even kind of look down on January because of what she writes. But they find themselves actually living in neighboring beach houses for a few months because because they are both broke and struggling with writer's block and they end up striking a deal where Augustus will write rom-coms and she will write literary fiction and they will do their best to help each other get through that and of course I think a romance blossoms between them. I've heard phenomenal phenomenal things about this book. Everybody loves this. this is like almost unanimously everybody's favorite Emily Henry. I know Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand really really loves this book and so I am very eager to give it a try. So this is definitely going to be my summer read. Roll number three. Come on. Um, be nice to me. Six again, which at least it's not a double. One, two, three, four, five, six. Emoji. Okay, so that's a fun one. So this one I actually have to use an emoji generator and whichever emoji it picks, I have to find a book that reminds me of that emoji or I feel relates to that emoji. So I will go ahead and share with y'all what emoji I get when I'm selecting the book. I can't actually screen record because I do use my phone to film. So my next role landed on the emoji prompt. So I had to use a random emoji generator and then I had to pick a book that kind of reminded me of the emoji and the emoji I got was a key. And so for that, I decided to read The Magnolia Palace by Fiona Davis. I don't know too terribly much about this. I got this as a book of the month because it sounded really interesting to me at the time. I do know that it has historical fiction taking place over two timelines. I believe the first timeline is set near the Spanish flu outbreak in 1919. And we're following a main character who at the time of this is a very sought after model, but then her mother dies and she kind of feels rudderless and without a goal and her work is dried up and there's been like this big scandal and then she's offered a position at the Frick Mansion and she becomes a private secretary there and during her time in the Frick Mansion I believe she kind of 
kind of becomes embroiled with the family and secrets and love affairs and things of that nature. And then we follow a timeline 50 years in the future. So I'm thinking probably the 1970s and the Frick Mansion is now a museum. And so we're following two people who work in the museum and I believe they start to uncover some of the mysteries that happened in the past at the Frick Mansion. This definitely sounds really intriguing to me. I am a big historical fiction person. Um, this sounds different than anything I've really ever read before in the historical fiction genre. So I'm definitely excited to give it a try. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Features a romance. Okay, that should be a pretty easy one. All right, so my next role landed me on the prompt to read a romance. And so for this, I think I want to go ahead and read Thank You for Listening by Julia Whalen. Julia Whalen is one of my favorite audiobook narrators. I think she's probably everybody's favorite audiobook narrator. She is just so, so fantastic and talented at doing the voices and just making these characters and these books come alive. And so this is her, I believe her second book. She has another one called My Oxford Year, which I haven't read yet. But I'm really interested in reading this one because it is actually about an audiobook narrator. And so I want to go ahead and see what Julia Whalen does with the story. I want to see what her talent looks like as an author. And of course, she herself narrates this. So I want to hear her read her own story. So I want to go ahead and give this a try. And from what I understand, there is going to be a romance involved between our main female protagonist and then another audiobook narrator whom she's narrating a romance with. So it definitely sounds fun and cute. And I'm excited to see what it's like. Role number five. Four. One, two, three, four. Becca Rec. And that is basically exactly what it sounds like. I have to read a book that is recommended by Becca. All right, next I landed on Becca Rec. And for this, I'm finally going to read a book that I've heard so, so much about. And I've never read it. I've kind of been a little bit nervous to read it just because of how it's told. And that is You by Caroline Kepnes. So this is about a stalker. And you are actually in the head of the stalker. And that is why it's called you because this book is actually told in second person. So you are in his head and he'll say things like you did this, you were that, you saw you, 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 you. And I'm not sure how I'm going to jive with that narrative, but I literally have heard nothing but amazing things about this book. Everybody seems to love it who has read it. And it's obviously very different from anything that's out there. And I guess you start to kind of sympathize with the main character. You kind of understand why he's doing what he's doing. You're not necessarily creeped out by it. I do know that there is a Netflix adaptation. I don't know how well that follows the book. I know it's now several seasons long, so they probably had to like do their own thing with that. But I've, I've definitely heard great things about the book and it is a Becca Rec. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot. All right. Second to last roll. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Big book. Greater than 500 pages. Oh boy. All right. So not only do I have to read a chunky book, but I also have to roll one more time because of those doubles. All right. Next, I landed on the prompt to read a book greater than 500 pages. And so I was a little bit stumped for this because a lot of the books that I have that are over 500 pages are fantasy. And I try to read those physically because I feel like I get more out of them when I read them physically. The problem is, is that I'm a very slow physical reader these days. Almost 99% of what I read is on audiobook just because I don't have the concentration. I also like to multitask. I like to be able to do laundry and stuff while I'm listening to a book. So it just works better for me. And I wasn't sure what I could actually maybe get done within a month period. So I actually decided to choose a book, the final book of a trilogy. I had listened to the other book, two books via audio. And so I know that if I don't complete this physically, I can easily switch to the audio. And that is The Beauty of Darkness by Mary E. Pearson. Yes, this is just the dust jacket. I have cheated a little bit and I have already started it because I finished the book that I was reading physically prior and I needed something to read physically and I wanted to go ahead and get a jump on this. So this is the third and final book in the Remnant Chronicles, so I can't really say much about this, but this is a young adult fantasy novel and in the very first book you're following a princess who is set to marry the prince of this kingdom and she does not want to so she flees so through the first book you're following her and then you're following two people who are after her you're following an assassin who has been sent to kill her and the prince who was set to marry her but you don't know which one is which until the very end of the book and so then it just kind of goes from there and each book directly follows the last one so this picks up immediately after the second book left off and so far I am enjoying it I'm only probably about 60 or so pages into it but it just picks up right where you left off 
off. I admit I also want to kind of read this to go ahead and get it off my shelves. It's been sitting there for quite a while and part of me wasn't even sure I was going to continue with this series. I've been moving away from young adult almost entirely. Young adult fantasy is probably one of the only young adult genres I ever really read anymore but it's been a while since I read the second book and I wasn't sure if my interest had faded so I wanted to go ahead and give this a shot and luckily I am enjoying it. So I will continue it if I can't get through it physically or if maybe I'm in between audiobooks and need something to read I might just switch to the audiobook of this but this book is over I believe it's almost 700 pages actually so this definitely fits that prompt. Okay let's see what this final roll brings. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Spring. Okay, so just like we had summer vibes, this is a book that reminds me of spring. And then my final role landed me on the prompt to read a book that has spring vibes. So for this, I'm actually going to read Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. I feel the colors are very spring-like and I honestly I don't know really what this is about I just know that it's going to be a romance involving women in STEM and I loved the love hypothesis so much that is probably the best fake dating trope I've ever read so um, I really am very very interested in getting to this and seeing what Allie Hazelwood does with this second book I'm so excited to read this one and that's why I wanted to go ahead and pick this for that spring prompt so that is actually the end of the roles that I did for the bookopolathon I do have at least one more book on my TBR that I want to get to and that is Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus so this is actually the next read in a book club that I'm a part of on Goodreads and I wanted to get it anyway because I've heard amazing things about this particularly from Sarah at Sarah's Nightstand. She really really loved this and this is also a women in STEM novel although this is historical fiction. It's set I believe in the 60s and our main character is a scientist and she's dealing of course with a lot of prejudice, a lot of sexism and from what I understand her life kind of takes a different path from what she was expecting. She ends up becoming a single mother and a star of this reality cooking show and she starts gaining a pretty large following but a lot of people aren't happy about that because not only is she gaining in popularity but she seems to kind of be challenging the status quo and teaching women to do more for themselves and go after more for themselves. So it sounds like this is definitely going to be rooted in feminism as well because this is definitely a time that was very hostile to women in these types of working environments or even just hostile to women in general and so I'm definitely interested in seeing what happens with this. So as of right now I think that's all the books that I'm going to add to my TBR but more could be added. I am a Patreon for Chelsea Palmer who is another one of my favorite book YouTubers and she does a monthly book club for her patrons but that pick is not announced until the first of the month so I won't know if I want to participate in that until then. I'm also as I mentioned a part of a Facebook gifting group and I won't receive the book for that until October so I may try to read that when it comes in or it might just go on my TBR shelves I'm not sure but for now I have about seven solid picks and I think that's good enough for now and if I need more I definitely always have options to choose from. All right, so that is it for the TBR portion of this video. I did kind of just want to do a little bit of an update about what you could possibly expect from my channel going forward. My hope is to bring you at least one video a week. Before I was doing two and that is still what I would like to do. I would still like to do two videos a week, whether that's two formal sit down videos or one formal and one vlog. I do love watching vlogs and even filming vlogs, but the actual editing process of that takes a long time. I do want to get back into weekly reading vlogs so we'll see if I'm able to do that. So two would be the ultimate. I would love to do two for you guys, but my goal is to consistently do one video for y'all. So that is the plan. You should get at least one video from me every single week, probably on Wednesdays. The second one will likely drop on Saturdays, just so I have a couple of days in between to edit all of these videos. I might also be renaming and rebranding my channel. And if I do that, you will obviously see those changes coming up in a future video. And I will explain a little bit more about why I decided to do that rebranding in the video when it actually happens. But for right now, I am still the Continuing Chronicles. But anyway, y'all, that is it for this video. Please comment down below and let me know if you have read any of the books that I plan on reading in October and what you thought. Please let me know what you plan on reading for October. I find it funny that it is spooky season, my favorite season, and yet I'm not even reading my favorite genre of mystery thrillers, like hardly any of them. It's all like romance and light and fluffy, but that's just how the, that's just how the dice rolled, if you will. But yes, I would love to know what you plan on reading for October. I'd love to just chat with you about anything. What have you been up to? What are some of your favorite recent reads? Please comment down below. I want to chat with you down there. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, because I would sure love to see you in my next video, which is coming y'all. Bye.